When you're in a position and you're losing money, don't hedge it, just get out, right? There's, a, there's an old kind of joke that says when you're out in the water and you develop a hole in the boat, you don't drill a hole in the boat to let the water out. That's what happens when you start hedging positions when you're already losing money. The best thing to do is have, of course, your predetermined spot where you're gonna get out. And if you don't like how much you're losing, then going forward, first of all, get out of the position. Going forward then, adjust your position size smaller so that if the same thing happens, you'll lose less money, right? The goal and the ethos of professional traders is to keep your losses small and to play superior defense. I know everyone wants to triple their account, but that only is gonna happen if you learn to keep your losses small, right? Because your gains only look like gains to the extent that you keep your losses small. Otherwise, they all wash out, and then what the hell's the point? You've done all this activity for no money. So I get those kinds of questions like, you know, I got this position, would you buy puts here? And I'm like, well, where's the overall position, you know, right now? Because the time to hedge, for example, if you're in options, it is possible for you to trade with a hedge on and create what's called a synthetic position, long the stock with a married put. That's something different. That's when you're initiating the whole structure at the same time. You're not adding a, a hedge after the fact, after you already have unrealized losses. So this is about emotional intelligence. If the money's gone, the money's gone. Selling calls at that point doesn't make a lot of sense because A, it truncates your upside, and two, it doesn't mean, you know, look, you can buy a $20 stock and sell a $2 call. What happens after 18? You're still losing money. And then your, your upside is capped at whatever the strike is. So, so now you're, you're trading a completely different strategy. You're coping with the fact, you, well, your trading model is actually a coping mechanism, right? It's not really a trading model at that point. Because now it's like, well, what should I do? And I've always said on the show here is you need to know what you're going to do before you even put the trade on. How are you going to enter? How are you going to exit? And if it's your style to add to your winners, where specifically do you do that? If you say, well, I'm just going to see how it goes. That's bullshit. That's not a trading style. That's amateur land. So what is it? What are you going to do? You're going to get better results faster in both your behavior and in your trading results if you build your trading model first and then act it out without emotion, regardless of how you feel, right? Jocko likes to say discipline equals freedom, but it's what do you have to feel while you have to have the discipline, right? That's the big rub. What is it that you have to feel? We all get up, he and I get up at the same time every day. I don't like it. I want to be comfy in bed. <laughs> I don't want to have to go to bed early. But I made the choice to come to California. So that means all the markets are on Chicago and New York time for the most part. Right? That was a conscious decision. Got no one to blame but myself. And in order to be up and to be prepared right? Because preparedness is everything, right? The victorious warrior first wins and then seeks battle. My preparation starts the night before, right? I know exactly what I'm going to do the next day. Very, very infrequently do I have a, a modification to have to make that morning. Unless there's a disaster, like if I'm looking to buy something and something happens where there's a big sell-off, I'm just not going to enter the order because it's it's two standard deviations away from where I would need it to be. So, okay, okay, no big deal. Don't put the trade on because it's not in the neighborhood of where I need it to be. But what, to me, when I hear about people wanting to hedge after the fact, it means to me that they didn't have the right plan going into the trade in the first place, and now there's there's an emotional problem that they're trying to come to terms with. The money's gone. Okay, if you bought NVIDIA at 1150 and it's down at 1100, it's not a big deal. Volatile stock, right? It's 5% or whatever. But trying to hedge at that point, like what's the, what's the point though? Obviously, you don't want to lose, but this is something that you should have thought about earlier on, like before you put the trade on. 
like how to trade it maybe a quarter of the size so that if it did go down 50 bucks against you, which is kind of a normal day's work for the stock anymore, it doesn't hurt you as much. Then you could add, again, go back and watch the replay of the live stream. Think about, exp exp um, why can't I think of it? Progressive exposure. How do you add incrementally? By paying more, which is a good thing because at least there's other buyers buying when you're buying, which is a good thing. It's counterintuitive. It's counteremotional. You don't like those feelings, but sooner or later, you, I think you'll kind of come to see that my, my ethos, my style is very, very practical, right? It comes from being a street smart person, probably more than anything, which probably is not a, isn't, isn't a shock to me to say it like that as I'm sitting here now, because, you know, I grew up in New York and, and people in New York tend to be very street smart. They kind of have to be. That's the culture. That's the environment. So understand that about your, yourself. Think about what that's saying. If you're in a position and you're thinking about hedging, are you really trying to avoid the decision of just offsetting the loss? Because to me, when you offset the loss, now the position's gone. You can stop thinking about it. You could also take the ticker off your screen, and now you can think with a clear head. It's very difficult to be under duress when you are you know, losing money, and now it's like, okay, well, what do I have to do to um, you know, handle this position? You should have known ahead of time. Know where you're going to get out. Don't trade and position size for how much you want to make. Position size for what you're willing to lose. And whatever volatility measurement you're looking at, anticipate it moving twice what you thought it was going to move. Because again, the, the job is to play superior defense. If you're starting and doing this on your own with no particular set of skills or, trading, or training, then playing defense is really going to be your best friend as you learn your craft. Like this video, check out this one.